Well, it's the next morning and I'm pleased to see that it didn't all leak out. This leaked out yesterday when I got home from taking the kids to karate practice. This was gone. And so we had to decide whether to wait and mix up a batch or after it was done or just throw some more in there last night. So we put more in there last night. This stayed good the whole time. And this has got some mass to it, so it's dried up more. Or it's harder. It's got awesome character to it. But it's gonna get routered down, so it's gonna look a bit different when we get into it. These little knot holes stayed good. This as well all leaked out, so it's still a little tacky. It had leaked all out, so I came back and taped this whole thing up with Tyvek tape. I don't know, my tape comparison, these seem similar, but it seems like Tyvek holds a little bit better. So I'll be going with that in the future. Um, so we gotta give this probably another 12 to 24 hours. This is a three-part epoxy. It's a really slow cure, so that's just what I had on hand. I probably could have made it a little quicker cure, but um, that is about two and a quarter inches deep right there. It's not a lot of it. And then this, this knot hole turned out really cool. And that piece, the backsplash, is going to get playing down quite a bit. I may actually resaw it. We'll see. The client is coming over shortly and I'll be able to discuss with uh, her how thick she wants that backsplash. All right, on to the next. All right, here we are. By the uh, miracle of camera work, the slab is now in place. Got the router sled set up and uh, we're gonna commence on getting this thing flat. Um, I've shimmed this thing, this uh, slab has a, a twist to it, so it's like a quarter inch off of the, the deck here and a quarter inch off the deck down there. I've shimmed it, I've glued the shims in with um, hot glue because once I start, I do not want this to move. You know, it'd be really bad if you're halfway down and something happened and this thing shifted and you try to match that up again would not be good. So I'm going to shim it. I'm going to put blocks in on either side, screw those down on all four sides, lock it in, shim it, and then we're going to get going on it. So I'll show you that after I get it all locked down.
Last camera died, back with another camera. So anyway, a little bit of tear out there. Um, but all in all, I think it looks really good. Looking forward to start sanding on this. It's a lot of work. And now the whole shop is covered in a film of dust. Everything. Already clogged up one of those filters. Vacuum that out. Um, and I've vacuumed like three times. So the, uh, the whole shop will have to be de-dusted. But it does have a nice um, walnut smell in here. Excited to see how this is going to turn out once it gets sanded up. So um, I'll get on that. second time today we shall see it's colored quick coat I got the backsplash sanded got the slab sanded I still haven't gone to 320 on the week to the very end just in case it gets any scratches or anything like that and uh, start cutting this thing to length and put the finish on what I'm trying to do with these templates here is get as much of this slab usable as possible. I'm running into the limitations of most countertops or vanities. I'm trying to get a 22 inch uh, surface here and then I got a backsplash that's about two inches thick so that's gonna eat a lot of it up. So what I plan on doing is cutting the back of this thing flat and I'm gonna screw a, uh, a one and a half inch piece of stock to the back of this probably slap it on with some epoxy and screw it and um, so that'll hold tight and then that'll push the slab out and then I'll drop the two inch backsplash down on top so that'll cover it by about a quarter and so uh, what I'm also trying to do this is my template it's fitted to the room you know the one corner was about 91 degrees and the other corner was about 89 degrees so it's important it gets a template like that built first you don't want to cut it wrong and I'd rather screw up on a template than screw up on the main piece and another thing I'm trying to get done is you know I'm measuring from the side of the vanity top to the center of this knot hole and I want that to correspond directly with that knot hole so when you look at it sitting in the room they're both you know lined up because you know this came from the same slab so I think it'd be a neat feature you know they're already close but I wanted it to be exactly lined up so it looks like somebody opened the tree I mean, it won't be book matched but when you come in and you see a knot there and a knot there and the similar or identical wood it's going to be obvious that it's cut from the same log and I think that's it's kind of neat so that's what I'm doing um, it's laid out I've traced it I've measured it 20 times and I'm getting ready to cut it. It's a bit nerve wracking, but um, gotta do it sooner or later. So that'll be the next shot.
Well, there it is. Um, cut to the template, kind of assembled. Just threw the uh, backsplash up on there. Looks pretty good. I think it came out all right, but we'll be able to tell when um, we put it in the house. See what I did on this backsplash. I don't know if you can see it, but I, I cut that with a little bit of back cut on it. Because when it sits in the um, the bathroom, I'll grab this square. It's gonna be square. And I may have to fine tune it with a belt sander if there's any irregularity in this lab although it does look pretty darn good there's a slight gap and I want that thing airtight I'd rather not use any caulk any silicone and so <clears throat> if I have to adjust it with the belt sander with this back cut you know this thing's gonna sit forward a little bit which makes it just rest on that front leading edge so when I go to sand it, I only have to touch that front edge and that'll adjust it. So I don't have to sand off two inches of walnut. So when I scribe that, it'll be easy to sand. And it'll be tight right there in the front. So, so far so good. Happy with the cut so far. Now, um, next is to sand this thing. I've decided to I'm going to go with Pilex and I'm going to try to get as much shine on this as possible. We debated a long time about whether to go with um, like a bar top epoxy look or more of a satin look. And because this is a, a vanity, uh, it's going to be around water. So we decided to go with the Pilex because it's, um, it's a floor finish. It's going to, it's very got good water resistance it's got good um, durability over time and my experience with the um, the gloss epoxy over time is it scratches and it just it doesn't stand up to wear as well and so I want something that's gonna last a long time so we're gonna sand this thing maybe up to like 600 and when I put that Pilex on there I'm gonna buff it with a floor buffer and a hand buffer and try to get as much shine onto it as I can. So, next step, final sanding. Blow it off real good and then we're gonna put the finish on. And today's Saturday, it's Saturday night. Shoot for a Tuesday install. So, we're on track. 